Hey guys, Pandragon Dan here, and welcome back to Disney Couples Reshuffled. So after the last glitch of the last team, we're now back to some form of normality with our reshuffled couples. So let's go on to the next team. So in this team up, the Queen of the Jungle beats the King of the Forest. It's Jane Porter from Tarzan meeting Robin Hood. Now I know what you guys are thinking, so I'm going to make this absolutely clear now. In order to avoid any furry references, we'll be focusing on their personality and why they would actually make a good team. Because, you know, couples doesn't have to mean... Well, couples, after all. Anyway, let's just move on. So up first, we have Jane Porter from Tarzan. As you probably know, Jane Porter is voiced by English actress Minnie Driver, who has an extensive back catalogue of work. One of her most notable voiceover roles was in the English dub of Princess Mononoke, in which she voiced Lady Ibushi. Jane is one of those prim and proper English roses that has strong artistic intentions, and she's also responsible for teaching Tarzan how to speak English, which is pretty cool. She's incredibly well-spoken and eloquent, but there are times when I think she's a little bit of a damsel in distress. Um, well, at least the beginning of the film, anyway. But she's still a likeable character, and like many Disney heroines, she has a kind heart. She has two outfits in the film, the first one being a yellow dress, the other one being a more jungle outfit, which signifies her acceptance of Tarzan's culture. It's also in this one she becomes a little more jungle savvy, which is later explored in other Tarzan media. Although English in this film, in the original novel, she and her father were actually American. Why they made that change, I don't actually know for certain, but it is quite a nice touch, to be honest. If, like me, you're a big fan of Disney, you probably would have heard the fan theory going around about how she's related to Belle from Beauty and the Beast. The reason for this being is that she has a yellow dress that is very similar to the one that Belle wears. She also has a teapot set, which, if you look carefully, looks very similar to Miss Potts and her family. This could just be a coincidence, but knowing how Disney likes to throw in a few Easter eggs now and then, anything's possible, I guess. Now, even though she is the love interest of Tarzan, she actually doesn't appear till about 30 minutes in, which is very similar to Meg from Hercules. In actual fact, both of them were animated by Ken Duncan, so that's why they have very similar facial features. There's actually another fact I found about Jane Porter, and this may upset a few fans of her, but contrary to popular belief, she's actually not considered a Disney princess. Well, at least by Disney anyway. That being said, she actually was considered for a Disney princess, and I think actually was included in the actual lineup, but Disney removed her quickly afterwards. The reasons for this are somewhat unclear, but there may be three possibilities. One, her dress could be confused with Belle's dress, seeing how similar it looks. Two, She's actually not a princess, nor is she of royal blood. And three, technically she's queen of the jungle. She's actually higher than a princess, which means that she was a queen before Elsa. Ha! Huh, take that, Frozen fanbase! Okay, okay, that was a bit harsh. Hopefully you guys can let it go. <sighs> Why didn't you accept my date, Elsa? I just wanted to build a snowman with you. On somewhat of a side note, this also happened to Esmeralda in The Hunchback of Notre Dame. What does Disney go against that film? That film's awesome. So that's a few facts about Jane Porter. Now let's look at her partner. The legendary rogue of the forest and hero to the people, Robin Hood. So as you probably guessed, this version of Robin Hood is based on the Robin Hood of legend. Except he's a fox. Because, well, reasons. He was voiced by another English actor by the name of Brian Bedford, who was well known for doing Shakespearean productions. In his life he gained seven Tony Awards, which is actually the second most for any male actor. The first being Jason Robards with eight awards. So just like the legend of which he's based on, in this film he's a heroic outlaw that robs from the rich and gives to the poor, making him a hero in the eyes of the common people, but an enemy in the eyes of King John. He's followed around by a band of merry men, who includes Friar Tuck and Little John, but he's no slouch fighting by himself. His skills include, but aren't limited to, being an expert archer, being able to hit every target in the archery tournament. He's also a master of disguise. At one point he dresses up as a stork and is able to fool the guards. Well, though considering that most henchmen in Disney films are as thick as two short planks, that's probably not so much of an achievement. Even though archery is a main skill, he's also an expert swordsman that can easily put King John in his place. And because he lives in the woods, he knows them like the back of his hand. Or paw, whichever way you want to look at it. The point is he knows the forest very well, knowing the best places to hide in them. Whilst this costume is sort of based on the traditional Robin Hood look, it kind of looks very similar to the costume in Peter Pan, if you look carefully, albeit without the tights. Some of you may probably be wondering, why is Robin Hood actually a fox? Well, it's very possible that his design may be a reference to Reynard the Fox, who was a trickster in Western folklore. One note I did find out is the animators could have possibly reused the design of Robin Hood from an old film they did called Chanticleer, which was one of their unfinished films. Uh, that I'm not 100% sure, but I guess it could make sense. 
there really isn't a lot more I can say about Robin Hood. I mean, he's just, well, awesome. He's Robin Hood, for crying out loud. If you know the story of Robin Hood, then I don't really need to say too much. He fights the bad guys, he gets the girl, and he lives happily ever after. At least in the Disney films. So now the big question, why would they make a good couple? And remember, by couple, I mean team up. Having met Tarzan, Jane has a vast experience of meeting wild men, and even wild animals, in the jungle. So I don't think meeting Robin Hood would put her off too much. And on the other side of the coin, Robin Hood is pretty nifty with a bow and arrow and very quick on his feet. But I don't think Jane will have too much trouble keeping up with him. Bear in mind at the end of Tarzan, it looks like he's trained her in the ways of the jungle, so she'll be able to keep up with Robin Hood no problem. Together, I think these two will give King John a run for his money. Or even Clayton for that matter. Ah, oh, good old Clayton. The one guy that's guaranteed to leave you hanging. What? Okay, so that's Robin Hood and Jane Porter done. Now, they do need your support in this one because they're going up against some really tough competition. On Morgan's team, she has Jasmine from Aladdin and Beast from Beauty and the Beast. Two iconic characters in their own right, so this is going to be a tough battle. But, never let it be said that Jane and Robin Hood are ones to turn down a challenge, and your votes can give them an advantage. So as before, links to vote in the poll are down below in the description box. Make sure you also check out Morgan's video about Beast and Jasmine, then cast your votes. As always, don't hang around. The vote is only open for a couple of days. And as always, please be sure to like and share this video and subscribe to our channels. Right, that's the next team out of the way. In the next video, I'll be looking at a strong independent Disney heroine and a not-so-independent, useless Disney hero. Be sure to check back before then. Until then, guys, thank you so much for watching the video. See you in the next one. Bye!